Welcome to the Bosman Viewing, and today is episode 2 of Play On, our more raw and uncut section of the Bosman Viewing. And today we're going to be reviewing the highly anticipated Baggio the Divine Ponytail. So right off the bat, it's worth pointing out this is not a sports documentary movie, this is a biographical film. I made the mistake of only watching the teaser trailer and getting really excited about watching this just based on that alone, since any football or sports documentary that's on, I'm in to watch it. So if you're expecting this to be on a similar level or something like All or Nothing or The Last Dance, this is not that. So go into this knowing it's a biographical film with actors playing out certain parts of his life and career. Okay, so the movie starts off with Baggio as a 17-year-old playing for Vicenza and already being interviewed and hyped up as the next great Italian player. This leads to showing a fractured relationship Baggio, or Robbie as he's called throughout this movie, has with his father and a supposed promise he made to him as a child. From here the movie will then continue with Baggio's career and personal life, albeit they're being very selective on what they show, which I'm going to get more into later. And I want to start off with the positives and what I enjoyed about this movie first of all. And the first thing I want to recommend to everyone that doesn't speak Italian, don't watch it dubbed in English. Keep it on Italian with English subtitles. This for me gave it a much more immersive experience and helped in some ways to feel more of a connection to the story. Another positive I would say is the attention to detail throughout this movie is really impressive. I always felt the time period was reflected well as the film progressed, from the clothes being worn and the cars being driven, to the ball being used to play and the boots being worn, they were always spot on. I even noticed the sponsors at the side of the pitch during scenes were exactly right. And I'd also say that this is a well shot and well directed movie, with certain scenes showcasing the scope of the landscape well in a way I wasn't expecting from a football movie. So now it's time to touch on the not so great stuff about this movie, which for me unfortunately outweighs the positives. As much as I wanted to love this movie, there were just too many misguided choices for me. First off, the music selections. Throughout this film, in my opinion, they were just strange. Really cheesy at supposed emotional moments, and other times the music didn't seem to fit the tone and it became distracting. And then another big flaw for me was the actual football scenes. Considering this is a movie about one of the greatest footballers of all time, the scenes of them playing football actually took me right out of the movie. It's clearly actors who are barely running, which makes it super obvious they're not actually playing football. And on top of that, the football scenes themselves are just poorly shot, which I think emphasises this more. I also began to realise as I was watching this movie that if you didn't know who Baggio was before watching it, I think you're going to struggle to get invested in his journey from beginning to end. Not much time is spent on Baggio as a person, and many points actually seem rushed. An example of this, and this is a minor spoiler alert, I'd say when he suffers that really bad injury prior to joining Fiorentina, you should feel sympathy for him during his rehab and they should have fleshed that out more, but instead you just get a few clips of him at the gym with a physio as music plays. It seems that like certain sections need more time spent on them and I think the focus is misplaced at times. Talking of that focus, a large chunk of this film's focus is all about USA 94, which I can understand that decision because of the huge impact that tournament had on Baggio, the footballer and the man. But afterwards I started to think about this movie could have been much better if it was all based on Baggio at that World Cup alone. This would allow you to give more insight and more details based over a shorter period of time. A good example of doing that is the Brian Clough movie The Damned United. That movie was much more contained and focused which I think this movie needed. I also found it strange when they decided to have multiple 6 year time jumps throughout the movie, missing out massive chunks of Baggio's career. We didn't see him at Juventus, winning his Ballon d'Or, or during his stints at either AC Milan or Inter Milan. I think it goes back to what I said earlier, where everything seems rushed and lacking the needed focus. With this being a Netflix movie, I actually think a 6-8 to eight part series could have been a good idea to really break down all of this legend's career. So in summary, would I recommend this movie? If you're a big fan of Roberto Baggio and football from this era, then I think there is enough here to get enjoyment from it. However, if you're a younger football fan or someone looking to really learn all about Baggio's career, you may struggle to connect with this movie. My only hope from this and the feedback it's gotten is that one day we're going to get a full in-depth Roberto Baggio documentary featuring the man himself discussing his life and career because it seems that like that's what most people were looking for. Alright, so that's our review of Baggio the Divine Ponytail. It's part of our Play On series and the Bosman Viewing. Have you watched the movie yet? What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this review, if you could thumbs it up, that'd be great. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one.